Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and I'm at Aquamedic Live. At Aquamedic Live, we import corals from the world's oceans and sell them wholesale. Now, inevitably, when we're bringing corals in from the world's oceans, they fly halfway around the world and some of them come in stressed. So today we're going to talk about how we go about rehabilitating some of these rougher corals. Mainly we're going to focus on the big fleshy LPS corals. Now the absolute first thing we do is we look at the parameters of our frag tables. We're looking for calcium, alkalinity, phosphates, nitrates. We want to make sure that everything's where it's supposed to be. Phosphates and nitrates, I really shoot for close to zero. And of course, calcium alkalinity, I want to be between 4 and 450. Alkalinity, I like a DKH of around 8.5. But even when conditions are right, we can still have corals that are stressed out from that long flight. And we want to bring them back. As I'm sure you can tell by what's on the table, I'm going to focus on feeding. Corals feed in a variety of ways. They have a symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae algae. That's the algae that lives inside them that th feeds off of the light and then the coral in turn feeds off of the algae inside them. The algae is what gives them their color. But they also have mouths that digest food. And the LPS corals seem to respond really well to a good feeding regime. So today we're going to talk about the method that we use to help revitalize those rough and dying corals. The story I'm really going to talk about is how we took a scalemia that I was ready to throw in the trash when I pulled it out of the bag. It was that dead and revived it into a beautiful UFO scalemia. Through trial and error, we have found that these four food products do a great job in help revitalizing and rehabilitating damaged corals. To start with, let's talk about amino acids. This is polyp extender by ME. Now you want to dose this directly to the water column. So it's 5 mLs per 100 gallons. You do not want to mix this directly with the food. It can actually burn your coral. I think of it like salt. If you mix a little salt into a soup, it adds to the flavor. But if you put all the salt into one spoonful, it would be horrible. Any polyp extender is also a good way to help get a feeding response out of your corals. If you have one that doesn't want to eat, try some polyp extender and see if that helps get those polyps out. Next up are the Fritz Genesis eggs. They're a mix of fish eggs and invert eggs, but they do a great job at feeding those big fleshy corals that really like the bigger meatier foods. So think Lobos, Scullies, and Helios. Next up is Fritz's Azox Coral Macro Diet. It's a nice mix of zooplankton and phytoplankton. Last but not least is Beta Pets. It's a dried coral food with probiotics and I use this in my tanks at Aquamedic Live and I also use it on my home tank with great success. Now it's time to mix the food up and as you can see I've switched over to store use bottles because this is actually this stuff I use on a daily basis. So to mix it, I'm really not too worried about exact amounts. What I'm really trying to do is provide food for a bunch of different corals because I'm going to end up feeding probably 10 or 15 different corals this mixture of food. So really I'm shotgunning it to provide something that every coral is going to like. So I put some Benepets in there and I'm going to squirt some fish eggs in there and then we'll give it a few shots of the Azox, mix it all up and we'll be good to go. Now that our food's mixed up, we need to target feed the corals themselves. Now if I feed this food directly to any of the corals, odds are the flow from the tank is going to blow it out of their mouth or the tangs in the tank are going to eat the food right out of their mouth, especially the fish eggs. They love the fish eggs and there won't be anything left for the coral. To counter that, we are going to use the UFO feeder that is produced by Animal Attraction in Greeley, Colorado. It's one of our best local stores and they have created this product to feed coral. The UFO feeders come in three different sizes. We have a four, a six, and an eight inch size. And really you're just going to pick it based on the size of the coral you want to feed. Now you'll notice these are a little dirty and used. That's because we use these every day. 
But here's how it works. We're going to put the feeder over the coral itself. We've got holes here to allow water exchange in and out. And then we'll take some food, we'll put it in here and feed it directly to the coral. These UFO feeders have actually made the job of feeding coral a lot easier. I'm now able to cover the coral up and feed it directly without having to shut off pumps or worry about fish coming along and taking the food out of the coral's mouth. This has increased my success with feeding. So that's really it. We just feed heavily. We shotgun the food that goes to it. But the results have been really good. That scalemia that I was ready to throw away is now a lovely thriving coral. In fact, it's one of the prettiest UFO scullies that I've seen. And it's only fitting that we resurrected a UFO scully with a UFO feeder. It's a coral that I was ready to throw in the trash, which today could retail between two and $300. It's a nice coral and this process has saved me coral, which is just the right thing to do, but it's also saved me thousands of dollars. If you're interested in your own UFO feeder, go to iReef2.com. I'll leave a link in the description down below. As for the foods, they should be available at most local fish stores. In the comments down below, tell me what foods you're feeding your corals and what your success has been like. For me, feeding large polyps, stony corals, has made the difference between death and success. Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. I'll see you on the next one.